The leadership of the National Assembly has faulted the way the social investment program, SIP, of the federal government is being implemented. President of Senate Ahmad Lawan and Speaker of the House of Representatives Femi Bajabiamila made their reservations about the scheme at a meeting with Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development Saadia Farouk. The meeting was convened by the leadership of National Assembly against the backdrop, backdrop of ongoing federal government's intervention initiative aimed at reducing the impact of COVID-19 pandemic on the most vulnerable Nigerians. Ola Awoni, special advisor on media and publicity to President of Senate, in a statement disclosed that Lawan and Bajabiamila made abundantly clear that the SIP needed a reform to make it more efficient and effective. The Speaker, however, urged the Minister to talk with the relevant committees and the National Assembly leadership on the best way to codify the scheme. And now with me in the studio is our social analyst and commentator, Annie um, Anihuvi. I, I think I have to stick to Annie. That's fine. Let's stick to Annie. <laughs> That's fine. It's fine. <laughs> All right. Always good to have you in studio. Thank you very much. Now, what are your thoughts, uh, basically, when we see two leaders or people in leadership position faulting themselves? We are not sure what is going on here. Well, this is a program that has been on since 2015, yeah. I, I guess, and right. uh, that is five years old now. Mm -hmm. When this program started, it was actually to, to take care of the people at the end of the spectrum of our society. Right. And if the program had been administered, this now comes to a question of leadership, of trust, and actually of empowering people. Mm -hmm. Now, if the right people had been there to look at this program in a robust way, they would have been able to now see the progression of the program to see mm -hmm. what they needed to beef up before we come to a crisis like this. Right. It, well, the leaders can say, he can actually say, no, I don't like the way you did this, I don't like the way you did that. But then when it comes to us, because we are the ones looking at it and mm -hmm. analyzing it, and this time, tempers are high. Right. Tempers are high. And there's a lot of judgment of what this person has done and what because our nerves are being trampled upon mm -hmm. each and every day over one thing or the other. Right. And the last thing we want to see on the TV continuously is people telling us they're giving everybody money. I haven't gotten my own. They're giving everybody food. I haven't gotten my own. Mm -hmm. Then this comes to the question of exactly what governance means to those who are in government. Right. Is it because somebody they know and they are comfortable with is in the position to do the job? Mm -hmm. Or is it because the person is effective to deliver what it takes that job to deliver? Mm -hmm. Because Nigerians are 200 million people. And How, counting, by the way. And counting. <laughs> yeah. How many people are involved in this distribution? How many people are involved in the systemic administration of this program? For them to fault it now, at a time like this that is needed the most, mm -hmm. which means the structure that was there in the first place was not a proper structure. Mm -hmm. Because if it was, we, we would have been saying, okay, we need to brief this up. Because one of his gripes is that it needs to be more effective. Effectiveness comes with administration. Mm -hmm. So if they had a good administrative system for it, it would have been more effective than what it is now. Mm -hmm. So it's time we look, we are citizens of Nigeria, Nigerians as Nigerians in leadership, whether you're in the public or the private sector. Let's rethink to ourselves, let's actually voice it out now, what governance actually means to us. Because mm -hmm. the more we keep hearing things of inappropriateness, inappropriateness, inappropriateness. It drives home to us that we don't know what we're doing as a country. And there are so many people that are watching us all over the world mm. and judging us each and every day. Hmm. Powerful statement there. I mean, um, people have said uh, you know, some arguments in different quarters, um, which we are likely to agree with, is that COVID-19 is a social leveler, you know, and one of the things it has done is revealed uh, the gaps in governance, in leadership. However, uh, don't you think that um, seeing the, you know, uh, Bachabia Mila and Ahmad there saying, or oh, faulting the system, isn't it like, you know, tasking the government and now beginning to say, yes, we are not doing it well. Is that, is that a positive in itself? It's a positive because right now they're, they're owning up mm. to the fact that we need to rise up to the occasion. Yes, there are, okay, COVID-19, we can say, okay, somebody traveled, came back from abroad, affected other people. Right. The people who are here, seated, doing nothing, did not get COVID-19. However, 
whether it's the person sitting or the person not sitting, mm -hmm. malaria also happens to everybody. Right. Malaria is also a leveler. Mm -hmm. Polio is also a leveler. Any, any pandemic is a leveler of any and everybody. But, you know, the thing with those ones is that you can easily fly abroad. But for COVID, you're not going anywhere. <laughs> you Nobody's can't go going anywhere. anywhere. <laughs> because these are the early stages of COVID. Mm. And like, like we were saying, yes, it's a good plus that they are now owning up. And each one is standing up and saying, look, this is what we need to do. We need, we need to actually deliver on governance. Mm. Let's have more people, when government makes all these robust programs, let's have more people handling them. Mm. Let us see specialists handling specialized things. Let us see doctors handling what doctors do. Let us see lab technicians handling what lab technicians do. Mm. Up till now, we've not heard anything from the SLT department, that's the science lab technology department. Mm. What are their findings? Are they in the laboratory? Are they anywhere, anywhere near this COVID-19 to let us know but we have such competent people here in this country who can go into the labs and let us know exactly what they see. Mm. We had misconceptions about malaria. When we started hearing what the lab scientists had to say, they made us, gave us a better understanding of malaria. Mm. We don't have enough understanding of COVID-19. Let them go into the laboratory, look into the microscopes. That's how they find these things and let us know what exactly it is. Mm -hmm. That they are standing up and saying that, okay, this is what we need to do is the right step. Mm -hmm. is in the right direction, but let them direct it also, navigate it towards the right thing so we get the right answers for the moment. Mm -hmm. Let's put this again a bit in perspective in relation to you know the relief materials and the palliatives, the cash that is being distributed. You know, we saw we heard in the media when you know federal government said so we've started distribution cash, uh, distributing cash, cash rather, people have started receiving alerts and all of that. But the question is, how do we know those who are getting, how are these people identified? Because, I, I mean, if you followed our reports this morning, we've been out in the streets and going to the community, you know, the places you think they, they will be the you know, uh, beneficiaries of all of this. How is the government identifying? Who are these people that, you know, they have uh, given to would be the question. You see, as large as Nigeria is, just like we said before, I don't think any one system or any two systems will be enough to mm. take care of everything that needs to be taken care of within a short period of time. Right. If they say they are going to give every Nigerian money and they are already giving some people money, now the people that they are giving money to are not yet in your purview. You don't know who they are. You don't know where they are. Well, I've seen some reports of people being given money in northern Nigeria. I'm sorry, but that is the report we see in northern Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Now, who are those people and where is the money coming from? Now, if we, if we, this is a time for local government chairmen to come out. Even with the places that we have been to, to see the, the reports from Ogogoro, mm -hmm. where, what happened to the local government chairman of that area? Right. What is the local government chairman saying? I expect to see local government chairmen, local government chair ladies, actually speaking in the press right now to say, this is what is happening in my constituency. Right. This is what is happening in my own environment. Ogogoro is, is, is um, on, on the responsibility of somebody. Yeah, somebody is right. responsible for that. Who is the person and what are they doing to help those people? Mm -hmm. And also, in the midst of some of these reports, we see these elderly people, some of them in their 60s, some of them in their late 50s. It is an adult responsibility to take care of your environment. Mm. My uncle moved into a house when they built it in the Shapa London some years ago. And by that time, Nepal was not there yet. And he jokes by saying he is his own local government chairman because, because he provides everything. his own water, his own light, and everything for himself. But that was a responsibility he owned up to. Mm -hmm. This is a community. What has the community also done to take care of that aspect of their livelihood, knowing that they have children? What mm -hmm. have they done as a community? If they have done something as a community and they've done it thus far, Government can meet them up at the rest of the way. But if they are not doing anything, and everything is about the trade, the trade and the money they're getting back from the trade. You don't expect government now to start thinking for you. Mm -hmm. Thank you so very much, Annie, for your thoughts there.